right now on VFN TV. We've been praying it. You heard us on the programs. Dear God, end abortion, sin revival, send a third great awakening. Guess what? The first part of that scenario is coming to pass because five states have signed laws to end abortion in their states. It's happening. This is so much more right now on VFN TV. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. If you've been with us over the years, you've heard us constantly pray, dear God, end abortion, send revival, send a third great awakening. The reason why we say it in that order is, I don't believe that we can have the great awakening that we have to have to be able to turn our nation around without ending innocent bloodshed with over mm. 50 plus million children being aborted. That blood, think about it, uh, Cain, killed his brother Abel, the first murderer on the face of the earth, and God's word says his blood still cries out to this day, which means all that innocent bloodshed is crying out against America. So we have to turn, and that turning's taking place. It is so exciting to see that. I'm Greg Lancaster, of course, joining me is John Ramos. Hello. We've been praying, we've been asking, you know, and, yeah, we have. and we're trying to figure out how do you pray that, and thanks to Mike Bickle, International House of Prayer, you know, Amber, my daughter, Amber Barr, was there doing an internship, and they just nailed it down to a simple, simple a prayer. Dear God, end, end abortion. abortion. And now also right. I'm just like, <laughs> you know, don't be all religious. Like, God, end abortion. And it's happening. As a matter of fact, that was a Kay Ivey. Kay Ivey. Governor Kay Ivey. Signed sweeping yeah. abortion ban into law. Every life is sacred gift from God. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, it is. The governor of Alabama has signed the toughest abortion bill in the country into law. Governor Kay Ivey says the bill stands as a powerful statement to Alabamians deeply held belief that every life is from God. Said to the, to the bill's many supporters, this legislation stands as a powerful testament. Oh, I just said that. Okay, yeah. the bill makes abortion at any stage of the pregnancy a felony. Wait a minute, say, say it again. The bill makes abortion at any stage of pregnancy a felony. Ah, uh, you gotta do it again. Listen, this, is, right, huge. this is huge. <laughs> the bill makes abortion at any stage of pregnancy, a felony. Which means this, if you don't know what a felony is, that means you go to prison. You don't go to jail, you yeah. go to prison. Yes, in fact, you go to, it's punishable okay. to 10 to 99 whoa, years whoa, whoa, whoa. or life in prison for the, for the abortion provider. Now there's no exception for rape or incest, only for women's health uh, being at a serious risk. And so the mm -hmm. law doesn't go into effect for six months, but it, it, it is expected to face legal challenges to stop it. And, mm -hmm. and they go into the Supreme Court to be able to come against a decision, not a law, a decision by the Supreme Court in, 2000, in 1973. Listen, the judiciary branch does not, and under our Constitution, make any laws at all. It's the legislature branch. It's Congress that makes laws. The Supreme Court, this is a bad ruling to begin with. It, it, they just made, went with it, but it's, if they want to make a law in, in for legalizing abortion, then that's your congressman yeah. and your senators do that. And guess what? They're not going to do it because you don't want it. Nobody wants mm -hmm. that to happen. So you're looking at, you know, abortion is ending in America, which means, which means that you're looking at revival. You're looking at a third grade it's awakening coming to America. I mean, it's an yeah. exciting day and, to and see this. Alabama is not an, an anomaly. Because what we're seeing is a sweeping wave all across the country. Yeah. Because we, we're going to be talking about the five most recent uh, strictest anti-abortion laws in 2019. And it's important for under understand this that so, of course, they're expecting it to be challenged because Planned Parenthood will be talking about it. they're going to be suing everybody that stands up for the life of a child. But it'll go all the way to the Supreme Court. Now the Supreme Court was eight justices in the Supreme Court. Or nine, I nine, nine justices in the Supreme Court. And so the only thing they're supposed to do is to ask the question, is this constitutionally correct? Does it line up with the Constitution? Does it not line up with the Constitution? And it is unconstitutional, Yeah. which means, and you just got Kavanaugh on there, right? Brett, Brett Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh. And Neil Gorsuch. Neil Gorsuch and a couple other ones in there. But you never, you never begin Clarence to pray now Thomas. for the Supreme Court because this case is, this and many others are going to come before them. And when they, when America turns from this shedding of innocent blood, killing of children who don't even have a voice yet, God's going to hear that. Yeah. He saw that with King Josiah. When he saw King Josiah stop that in, in Israel years ago, God brought blessing on Israel. It was an amazing thing. Yeah. And he said there wasn't a greater king that ever lived 
than King Josiah. Why? Because he ended this very kind of thing in sure. Israel. It, it's not a woman's right issue. It's actually a life issue because the woman has the, all the responsibility and rights for her own body, but not the body that's in her There's body. There's two bodies there. Yeah. And two, if it was for her health, if you look at all the statistics of what happens to a lady after she makes that, that very difficult choice to do something like that, She's, they say she mentally, she struggles. She struggles oh. with depression. Yes. She struggles with self-hate. Uh, she struggles with so many different things because she just, it's, you can imagine if you kill one of your children, you're always thinking about that child. And you can tell yourself that that's not what you're doing, but you know that that child would be alive today if you wouldn't have made that decision to take that child's life. Now, uh, God can forgive you for that. And this law of K. Ivy or the, the state of Al uh, Alabama, state, yeah is not against the mother. No. It's against the doctor who has took a oath not to harm anyone. So if that doctor harms that child in the womb, aborts that child at any stage, he or she is gonna be charged with a felony up to 99 years in, in prison. prison. That's right. This is huge, okay. It's a big deal. So we're, we're gonna be looking at some of the five states, five states in the, in the country in 2019. Now there's other there's been other rapid movement in previous states, but yeah. 2019 has been the year yes. where abortion is coming down. The first one we're going to look at is what we just talked about was Alabama. Yes. Uh, because, because it is the K. most Ivy, recent yeah. KIV. By the way, this means the legislature, state legislature in Alabama and all these states, they voted yeah. to for this law, this bill, but the governor has to sign it to become a law, so That's which right. means all the government in that those states said, an agreement. we want to end this thing in yeah. our state. Okay, It's powerful. She said, it stands as a powerful testament to Alabamians' deeply held belief that every life is precious and that every life is a sacred gift from God. From God. Oh, my goodness. That's beautiful. We love you, Kay. Yes, oh, let's go goodness. to Georgia. Yes, yes, yes. Georgia. This was uh, Brian Kemp. Brian Kemp. Governor Brian Kemp says, we protect the innocent and we champion the vulnerable. And we stand up and speak for those that are unable to speak for themselves. I saw that conference. It was an amazing uh, conference. It was a major, major, if you remember this election, this was, a, I believe he ran against Stacey Abrams. And up until the last moment, I mean, they were still yeah. denying that this, this gentleman won, the governor won. But yeah. you can see why. This, this was a battle yeah. for life. This right. was a major, major And you saw happening. you know, a couple actors go into Georgia who are not even residents there, and they're <laughs> saying, listen, we're going to boycott Georgia. And they threatened everything they could. Yeah. But Georgia stood strong and said, we're ending this thing. We're That's ending right. abortion in Georgia. And I think yes. about you know, uh, Purdue, right? When he was there. Sonny Purdue. You know, he, he, they, they were in a drought, right? Major drought. A major drought. And they needed God to, to, to they needed rain. Yeah. So just in a biblical Patterns. They went out and prayed and said, "We need to pray and ask God and humble ourselves." Did it publicly. Did it publicly. Brought the cameras in. Yeah. And what happened? It rained. It rained. Yeah. It rained. And we talk about how things are full circle. You honor the Lord, God. You yeah. know, the Lord will honor you. That was years ago. Yes. And now today, Sonny Purdue is is on the president's cabinet. On the agriculture Department of Secretary Agriculture. Of Ag agriculture. It's just amazing how things yeah. come full circle. We have so many more states. We're going to talk about in just a moment. But we're going to go to break and come back. Listen, this is exciting days. This is not just some simple thing. This is responding to the heart of God and saying, we know this is wrong. We want it stopped in our country. And abortion is coming to an end. Join us out of the break. We'll be right back. I want to talk to you about our book. My book is out and it's ready for you right now. I will fight 10 strategies to fight for your success. Listen, so many people in the world understand if you're going to be successful, you got to fight for it. And many people who are believers and Christians think that just success falls out of the sky. But God has created the earth to respond to your labor. He's created the universe to respond to you believing in faith what he's going to do. So I share in this book very specifically about biblically, biblical fights that have happened, but also got 10 uh, specific uh, strategies to be able to help you. I don't care if you're a CEO, I don't care if you're a congressperson or a senator, I don't care if you're a janitor, a business owner, a teacher, a pastor. If anybody knows needs to know how to fight, pastors need to know how to fight for success and, and define you know, what success is. But I talk specifically, and I begin in this book, is about uh, how God spoke to me and why am I writing the book? God showed me specifically in a dream, a prophetic dream, several dreams, but one was that he has a wealth transfer coming and he wants to deliver wealth to his people 
but they don't have the character and the integrity to be able to, to manage that wealth. He's, he's, he told me that he's been getting a lot of money and wealth to them, but it goes right through their fingers like holes in a bowl. So they have to learn how to be able to develop strategies, biblical strategies to be able to position, be positioned. Why? Because a great harvest of souls is coming and it's going to take many, many dollars to be able to bring in that harvest. And it's going to be God's people who will fund that. And so he's looking for people that are, are willing to say, I want to be positioned. This is all about being positioned for great wealth. And it's not necessarily great wealth and money. It could be great wealth and influence, whatever God has entrusted you with. So get your, it's a free book. You just cover shipping and handling. We want to send it to you for free. And uh, you can go to vfnkb.com for all the details. You can see it on your screen. But listen, it's here. It's right here for you. Wonderful thing. Oh my, how many nuggets? Oh my, maybe uh, 500, 600 yeah. <laughs> wisdom nuggets in addition to these success strategies. It's yours now, vfnkb.com. minister with a group of people that I just absolutely love because all of us, we get tired. We want to quit every week and we look at each other and go, no, 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 let's, let's go. Let's go talk to some more people. I know we were all rejected yesterday. Let's keep going. That's what the body of Christ was supposed to do. We were supposed to gather together to stir one another up to encourage, put courage into each other. And that's what this is about. Man, our, our prayer is that God would do something in our midst that we really could walk away with, with greater courage. I'm not the son of God because you say I am. I'm the son of God because God says I am. I'm not confident because of what I can do. I'm confident because of what God says he will do. I'm not forgiven because I've earned acceptance. I'm forgiven because God says he has forgiven. Help me preach. I'm not going to do it because I think I can. I'm doing it because God said I could. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me? Welcome back to VFN TV with your host, Greg Lancaster. This is so exciting. We're seeing governors sign bills into law to end abortion in America. I mean, we have a president and a yeah. vice president that says life is winning, winning in again Lincoln. in America. That's right. You know, yeah. I was just thinking about that before we cut to break that I think a lot of these states have have drawn from the strength of our yes. president yeah. and they have seen that this man single-handedly has just been pushing and fighting along against, with mike pence the vice yeah, president yeah. fighting against fake news fighting against people trying to destroy his presidency and yet he just continues to persevere so i think they're saying this is the time to you do know, and right there's thing. something about you know that our president that he is openly saying you know i'm not this high quality Christian person, he's, right. he's, he's talking about the word God versus saying God. But what he's saying is, you as a Christian, you need to stand up. If he's standing up that bowl for God, hello, right? Yeah. How much more should we absolutely be standing up, you absolutely. know, for the Lord? Sure. And uh, I think it's just so important. I think it's so important. So who's the next next governor? Kentucky. This Kentucky. is actually state senator uh, Matt uh, Castlin. Uh huh. And he says makes Kentucky the leading nation. Well, they signed. They signed another the bill. law. Yeah. To end abortion in their state. That's right. In the state of Kentucky. Kentucky, and it makes Kentucky the leading, uh, the na leading in the nation for being a pro-life. How yeah. powerful is that? Yeah. You know that the, that really is a. Uh, Making so it makes Kentucky leading the nation in being a pro-life state, mm. and they have Kentucky's been very conservative. Yeah, and uh, it's just exciting to see. It, it's the fetal it? fetal heartbeat bill, and the the bill that they signed and passed and voted for. This new law bans abortion after the heartbeat can be detected, which can be uh, as early as six weeks into pregnancy. But if see if you're not a human being, you don't have a heart, yeah. and you don't have a heartbeat, right? <laughs> exactly. So if you have a heart, you're Hello? human. Hello. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Right, makes sense to me. Yeah, it's science, yeah, yeah. This is science this right? Is like I mean, one after another after another. I mean, abortion is ending in America. America. Amen. Ooh. All right, let's go to Mississippi. Well, in Mississippi, uh, Governor Phil Bryant signed Bill twenty one sixteen into law on March twenty first, and the measure bans abortions once a fetal heartbeat can be detected. Same thing. You're looking Same at a heart, fetal heartbeat stuff. bill, yeah, with the exception uh, for when a mother faces life threatening medical emergencies in which the baby cannot be saved. So it seems like right. both of those things have to be in conjunction. And this is what I believe said. I've often said that I want Mississippi to be the safest place 
mm. for an unborn child in America. Woo. This is, I can read that again. This is Governor yeah. Phil Bryant of Mississippi. <clears throat> I've often said, I want Mississippi to be the safest place for an unborn child in America. Because historically, and, and the stats don't lie, that the most dangerous place right now for yes, a child in America is in the mother's womb. Think about that. The Think most dangerous that. place for a child is not in some country at war. Yeah. It's not in some. Not in Syria. Not, not in, in North Syria. Korea. Even not even in a difficult gangster neighborhood, for yeah. example. But it's actually in the mother's womb. Over Heart fifty breaking. plus million already have been killed in the womb. Plus, I mean, that's just the numbers that are yeah. counting in America since 1973. Over forty years, a generation's worth of, of, of human beings right. have just been killed. Oh, man. So what's happened is Ohio. Ohio. Think, think about this key swing state, oh, yeah. Ohio. So yeah. th what did they sign? This is Governor uh, Mike DeWine. DeWine. Uh -huh. He is quoted as saying, the essential function of government is to protect the most vulnerable among us, those who do not have a, a voice. And that is so, so true, isn't it? If you've been praying that abortion will end, you're looking at answers to your prayers. Yeah. That's what we're seeing. We're seeing the beginning of what you're going to see is a great awakening, a revival yeah. come to America. This is hopeful, right? Yeah, no doubt. Hopeful. The new bill, uh, the new law bans aborting babies as soon as they have a detectable heartbeat. There you go. This is the third state. The essential function of government, and we read this, is to protect uh, the most vulnerable among us, those who do not have a voice. This is amazing what is taking place. Now, when we looked at also as well that there were so many uh, presidential candidates right now that are running on the Democratic side, and they are all have different positions on different issues. I believe there's 23 at that last count, but that number could be changing. But you and I were talking during the break, and one of the things that they do agree on is what? Abortion. <laughs> they want, they're up to aborting a child at any time, anywhere. And it's, it's just, it's, it's pretty clear. And if we get this right, if we get life right coming to this next election ah. coming up, we're getting things right before God. I want to encourage you, if you haven't yet, take the moment to comment below. Share your thoughts. What are you thinking about this? Give a shout out to the governors that are saying, yes, we stand with you. We're grateful that you're standing up. You know, put their names in there, you know, and just comment below or write to us at friends at vfnkb.com. We love hearing from you. We've been standing for years asking God to end abortion, send revival, send a third grade awakening. We're seeing that. Also, I want to encourage you, if you haven't yet uh, gone to a Spotify, we just have recently gotten on Spotify. You can follow us there. You know, VFNKB, you can see on your screen how to follow us, VFN TV. Or you can go to iTunes or Google Play and uh, subscribe to our podcast as there as well. And comment, rate us, you know, go to, give us five stars, talk about us. What happens when you do that, it's all computerized. So what causes it to do, they'll actually raise it up and send it out to more people because you stopped to comment, give it five stars, and put some comments on there about what's going on. Some good comments would be great. <laughs> Join us at the break. We're going to come back and have, what's the moral argument? What's the moral argument for not aborting a child? Join us after the break. We'll be right back. Why you see that changing? Because it's time. You know the difference between you and these people? They're cowards. And you ain't. The key to a healthy marriage is to keep your eyes wide open before you wed and half closed thereafter. For Family Talk, here's Dr. James Dobson. Last year, there were close to two and a half million divorces in the United States. And part of the problem is the tendency for young men and women to marry virtual strangers. Oh, I know a typical couple talks for countless hours before the courtship period, and they believe they know each other. But a dating relationship is designed to conceal information, not reveal it. Consequently, the bride and groom often enter into marriage with an array of private opinions about how life will be lived after the wedding and the stage is set for major problems. For this reason, I strongly believe that each engaged couple should participate in at least six to 10 sessions with a competent marriage counselor in order to identify the assumptions that each partner holds and to work through areas of potential conflict. Some couples discover through this process that they have major problems that hadn't surfaced until then, and they agree to either postpone or call off the wedding. Others 
work through their conflicts and proceed toward marriage with increased confidence. Premarital counseling is the key. If the tragedy of divorce could be reduced by even 5%, it would certainly be worth the effort. Welcome back to VFN TV with your host, Greg Lancaster. So you think about this, so you see these positive turns that's taking place uh, simultaneously with, to end abortion. What's gonna happen? What's happening at this very moment is Planned Parenthood and other agencies like them are raising up and they're gonna fight this forward movement to end abortion in America. They're funding a six digits, seven digits, what is oh, it? Oh yeah, ad campaign. An ad campaign. And it's huge, and they're gonna run them in North Carolina, they're gonna run them in Arizona, yeah. and some of these other you know, key states, but it's going down. So you're looking at, you're talking about the health of a woman. Well, 50% of the children being killed in the womb are women. So their health, a good health prescription would be allow them to live yeah. and, and the male babies as well to be able to live. But what is the moral argument? I'm just going to prager you now to find out what's the moral viewpoint of what's taking place. Let's take a look. Let's talk about one of the most emotionally charged subjects there is, abortion, but in an unemotional way. Also, let's not touch on the question that most preoccupies discussion of the subject, whether abortion should be legal or illegal. The only question here is the moral one. Is ending the life of a human fetus moral? Let's begin with this question. Does the human fetus have any value and any rights? Now, it's a scientific fact that a human fetus is human life. Those who argue that the human fetus has no rights say that a fetus is not a person. But even if you believe that, it doesn't mean the fetus has no intrinsic value or no rights. There are many living beings that are not persons that have both value and rights. Dogs and other animals, for example. And that's moral argument number one. A living being doesn't have to be a person in order to have intrinsic moral value and rights. When challenged with this argument, people usually change the subject to the rights of the mother, meaning the right of a mother to end her fetus's life under any circumstance for any reason and at any time in her pregnancy. Is that moral? It is only if we believe that the human fetus has no intrinsic worth. But in most cases, nearly everyone believes that the human fetus has essentially infinite worth and an almost absolute right to live. When? When a pregnant woman wants to give birth. Then society and its laws regard the fetus as so valuable that if someone were to kill that fetus, that person could be prosecuted for homicide. Only if a pregnant woman doesn't want to give birth do many people regard the fetus as worthless. Now, does that make sense? It doesn't seem to. Either a human fetus has worth, or it doesn't. And this is moral argument number two. On what moral grounds does the mother alone decide a fetus's worth? We certainly don't do that with regard to a newborn child. It is society, not the mother or the father that determines whether a newborn child has worth and a right to live. So the question is, why should that be different before the human being is born? Why does one person, a mother, get to determine whether that being has any right to live? People respond by saying that a woman has the right to control her body. Now that is entirely correct. The problem here, however, is that the fetus is not her body. It is in her body. It is a separate body. And that's moral argument number three. No one ever asks a pregnant woman, how's your body? When asking about the fetus, people ask, how's the baby? Moral argument number four. Virtually everyone agrees that the moment the baby comes out of the womb, killing the baby is murder. But deliberately killing it a few months before birth is considered no more morally problematic than extracting a tooth. How does that make sense? 
And finally, moral argument number five. Aren't there instances in which just about everyone, even among those who are pro-choice, would acknowledge that an abortion might not be moral? For example, would it be moral to abort a female fetus solely because the mother prefers boys to girls, as has happened millions of times in China and elsewhere? And one more example. Let's say science develops a method of determining whether a child in the womb is gay or straight. Would it be moral to kill a gay fetus because the mother didn't want a gay child? People may offer practical reasons not to criminalize all abortions. People may differ about when personhood begins and about the morality of abortion after rape or incest. But with regard to the vast majority of abortions, those of healthy women aborting a healthy fetus, let's be clear. Most of these abortions just aren't moral. Good societies can survive people doing immoral things. But a good society cannot survive if it calls immoral things moral. I'm Dennis Prager. Powerful, powerful. It's, listen, it's immoral to kill someone. It's immoral to kill your child. Listen, this is what God says. He says, before you was in your mother's womb, I knew you. Mm. He said, when you were in your mother's womb, I formed you. He talks about children in the womb. He talks about them as nations, literally nations. This one begets that one who has this one who has that one. When you see Jesus in the womb of his mother Mary and John the Baptist and his mother Elizabeth, and they came together, there weren't fetuses. That was a son of God and one called John the Baptist. And when they came near, they both jumped inside their womb because he knew that the Lord was in the womb. He actually knew that. In the womb, your child knows that. You don't, your child knows that you're gonna, if you haven't seen the movie Unplanned, I encourage you to go mm. see that because you're gonna see firsthand how tragic that really is. But just pray this prayer with me continually. Dear God, end abortion. Dear God, end abortion. It's very simple, mean it, pray it. God's gonna do it. Abortion is ending in America. That means revival and great awakening is coming to America. Let's just pray right now. But don't forget, comment below. Write to us at friends at VFN, vfnkb.com. Father God, I just pray right now over that mother right now that's thinking about taking her last child. Lord, her child's life, I just say, no, ma'am. On behalf of the child, I say, mom, don't take my life. I'm generations inside of you. I'll be a blessing to you. I speak life over your child. And we just pray, dear God, end abortion, sin revival, send a third grade away, can we pray in Jesus' name. And don't forget how easy it is. Love God, love others, and lead others to do the same. God bless. Wait, 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 don't go anywhere. Subscribe. Listen, together we can touch the world. That's right. Subscribe below, right? Wait, 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 don't go away. Subscribe. We're going to touch the world. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. Hey, be sure to check us out at vfnkb.com and also join the vfnkb community at vfnkbcommunity.com. Listen, your success is our success. Our success is your success. And our success together is kingdom success.